Among the statues in Petworth's Marble Hall is one of the goddess Artemis standing on a modern base of reddish marble. Like most of the antiquities collected by Charles Wyndham, 2nd Earl of Egremont, in the 1750s, it's a work of the Hellenistic period, the period between the death of Alexander the Great in 323 BC and the reign of the first Roman Emperor Augustus, who died in AD 14. Built into the base of the statue, and easily missed, is an important Greek inscription, which also dates to the Hellenistic period, though it is not otherwise connected with the statue standing above it. It records two decisions, or decrees, of the citizen assembly of ancient Athens relating to the robe, or peplos, of the goddess Athena. The periodic production of a new robe for their patron goddess was an important Athenian ritual. The robe was presented to the goddess Athena on the Acropolis of Athens at the city's principal religious festival, the Panathenaia. The central scene of the Parthenon frieze in the British Museum, which dates more than 300 years earlier than this inscription, is thought by most scholars to represent the presentation of the robe. At some stage in its life, the stone was reused as a threshold block. You can see the hole for the doorpost, and towards the right, the text on the stone has been worn away by the swinging of and passage through the door. To the left of the stone, at some point, a chip has broken off, and been replaced. As you can see, the text on the stone is divided into three sections. The first six lines, finishing with a line that has just two letters in it, are from the end of a decree, Decree 1, which contains general provisions for the robe. Most of the stone is occupied by the text of a second decree, Decree 2, which records honours awarded in 1087 BC to the teenage girls, Parthenoi, who had worked on the robe. This is followed by a roll of honour of the girls' names, arranged by the tribe to which their fathers belonged. Let us look in a bit more detail at each of the three sections. Since 1978, it has been known that a small fragment in the Epigraphical Museum, Athens, also belongs to the first decree on the Petworth Stone. Here is a translation of both fragments of this first decree. Not enough is preserved to enable us to piece together a continuous text, but it is clear enough that it contained general provisions relating to the robe. The first decree might date to the same time as Decree 2, or it might represent a reinscription of a much older decree. It seems then that our inscription belongs to a reform or renewal of the arrangements relating to Athena's robe. We can date the second decree on the stone more precisely than the first, as it begins with a dating formula in the archonship of De Macaris. We can be fairly sure that De Macaris was archon, or chief official of Athens, in 1087 BC. 1087 in our terms, because the Athenian year started in the summer. Here is an image of the text of all the first five lines of this decree. This introductory material, or prescript, contained further dating information and finishes with the name of the proposer, which is unfortunately not fully preserved. 
Here is an image of the translation of these lines. The main body of the decree runs as follows. Since, having made an approach to the council, the fathers of the maidens who have worked the wool for Athena for her robe make clear that the maidens have followed all the decrees of the people regarding these matters and have done what is right and have taken part in the procession in accordance with the prescriptions in the most fine and seemly manner possible and have also prepared from their own resources a silver bowl worth a hundred drachmas, which they wish to dedicate to Athena as a memorial of their piety towards the goddess. And they request the council and people to permit the dedication of the bowl. With good fortune, the council shall decide that those allotted to preside at the next assembly shall put these matters on the agenda and submit to the people the opinion of the council that it seems good to the council to permit the dedication of the bowl which the maidens have prepared as decreed and to praise them and crown each of them with a foliage crown for their piety towards the gods and their love of honour towards the council and people. And there shall be inscribed of the sponsor of the Panathenia, Themistocles, by the Prytany secretary on a stone stele, the decree and the names of the maidens, and it shall be set up on the Acropolis by the temple of Athena Polyas, in order that the zeal and love of toil they have shown in these matters may be readily emulated. You will notice that, except for a few gaps towards the end, the translation runs continuously. You may also have noticed that, on the stone, most of the text is actually missing. The reason why we can fill in most of the gaps is that there is another inscription dating five years later which praises the girls in exactly the same terms and is much better preserved. You'll notice that apart from the reference to the Citizen Assembly there are several references in this decree to the Council the council was a body of 600 citizens, 50 from each of the 12 tribes, which oversaw the day-to-day -day running of the city and prepared the business of the assembly. You'll also notice that the decree is to be inscribed and set up on the Acropolis by the temple of Athena Polyas. This was not the Parthenon, but part of the Erechtheum complex, which housed the ancient wooden statue of Athena on the Acropolis. The inscription goes on to refer to its own purpose. It is to be set up in the temple of Athena Polyas in order that the zeal and love of toil they have shown in these matters may be readily emulated. The purpose of the inscription was to honour the girls' hard work and in so doing to encourage their successors to emulate their example. Many hundreds of inscribed Athenian decrees honouring both citizens and foreigners are preserved most of them, like this one, originally set up on the Acropolis. The earliest dates to around 500 BC, and by 1087 BC, this kind of wording had been common in inscribed honorific decrees for 240 years.
the inscription finishes with a list of the names of the girls arranged by tribe. And here is a translation of the first two columns of the list. Only a few letters of the third column are preserved. You'll see that the girls' nomenclature includes their father's names and their father's deem. The Attic village, or sector of the city of Athens itself, in which they were registered as citizens. We know from our other information about these girls and their fathers that they belong to the elite of Athenian society. You can find out more about this inscription and the two others which honour girls who worked on the peplos at this period at www.atticinscriptions.com forward slash inscription forward slash AIUK1 forward slash one. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can click on the link pasted below. And a full discussion of the inscription is available in Attic Inscriptions in UK Collections, Volume 1. www.atticinscriptions.com forward slash papers forward slash AIUK.